Hi guys, welcome to the welcome to the page or welcome back if you've if you've viewed my other videos. Um, just a quick model. I don't want to say model paint, but model finish or model review. Um, this time it's the Revel Light. Uh, it's the Mercedes um, G wagon, basically um, used by U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, I think Denmark, Holland and Germany. Um, I think it was described as an interim uh, attack vehicle. But uh, I don't think there's very much difference between the domestic SUV version and the uh, military version. I think the US Marine Corps do a lot of updating on it from the pictures I've seen. Um, there's a lot of extra armour, um, extra weaponry. On the US versions, I think they've just stopped using it. The US uh, Marines, uh, the German ones just seem, um, yeah, under armoured, just pretty bog standard. So, uh, Rick, Rick's modeling site on YouTube, he seems to know everything there is to know about kind of from his builds, anyway. Um, he does a lot of German, modern German armour and modern German vehicles. So, <clears throat> I asked him about bull bars and, you know, I was thinking about different things to to kind of pimp the vehicle up, basically, to make it look a bit meatier. Because I'm doing the Afghanistan version, it just didn't ring true that it was a very domestic-looking vehicle in Afghanistan where there was huge threat of attack and roadside bombs. Um, but, yeah, from the, from the research, it just appears that it's um, quite um, plain. The box art is, is true to it. It's just a plain vehicle. Uh, I, I bought this Ravel uh, kit after I'd done the Fuchs. If you, if you want to go back, I did make a video of that. The Fuchs was a brilliant build. And I had this vision in my mind of doing three or four um, modern German army vehicles passing down a road in Afghanistan with some troops. Uh, I, did for a, I did for a minute think about... Uh, doing a roadside bomb and destroying half of the Fuchs. <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that because I love that model too much. But, um, yeah, I was only disappointed because this this um, Jeep, this Mercedes, is um, it just, it's going to look a little bit plain. Um, so I've bought some copper wire anyway. I can, put, I can try and put some bull bars on it. So the build's more or less done when I've started the video as usual. Yeah, video was straightforward. Uh, the build, build was straightforward. Because I'm brush painting. But also, obviously, if you're an airbrush painter, um, just consider where, you, where your glass effect plastic's going to go, your clear plastic parts. Um, and do some painting of the underside before the wheels are attached. You know, I painted the actual wheel... <clears throat> Uh, hubs before the tyres went on. Um, you just got to do it in stages. When I used to build planes, I used to put the, the clear plastic parts on right at the end after everything else was finished. And with vehicles, obviously, when you're putting a roof on something, uh, that's not always possible. You know, but the vehicle went together. The vehicle went together pretty good. Um, I was just disappointed that it's basically. A domestic vehicle with camouflage. <clears throat> um, so on the inside, before I put the roof on, um, I've done some oil wash on the seats just to make them look a bit more realistic. The um, the clear glue that you use to stop the fogging on the on the clear parts there's a specialist glue guys don't use your normal contact adhesive your normal uh, contactor um, adhesive on the clear glass of glass effect parts because it'll fog them because um, it causes melt them to kind of melt and fuse so there's a specialist um, adhesive for the, for them kind of clear parts and it's dried up because of uh, the fact I stopped doing planes. 
a while ago and I've been doing tanks. So PVA is kind of standing. I, I have a feeling super glue fogs them as well. Um, kind of have that memory from doing it once and <clears throat> so what I've done is I've used um, a varnish a gloss varnish to give the glass parts some some sheen um, and I actually used it to to cement them in place so I'd get the I'd obviously paint the, the window frame separately um, I, I put them in the the uh, clear coat, the um, clear parts. Then I sat them in the window frame while it's still wet, making sure there wasn't like an excess of um, varnish on them. Um, and it seems to have worked. They've they've kind of cemented into the to the frame. Um, just using that. Maybe it'll dry and become brittle, and the windows will push in. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I don't handle my models very much once they're built, uh, especially not if they're sitting on a diorama. So uh, I'm not too worried about that, as long as it's fixed enough. So then when the model had come together, and the parts were all painted in, in separate order, uh, the roof had gone on. Um, I did it in khaki grey. <laughs> all over because I wasn't going to do the camouflage um, the Fuchs is camouflaged and the Leopard 2 that is planned for the same diorama uh, I'll do in the NATO camouflage I wanted this to just mix it up a little bit and just be in the sand colour um, Laser Creation World um, does a light in these sand colours and I thought it looked really good so uh, that guy did a roof rack, which I don't know how a roof rack could go on a fabric roof. I know it exists. I just don't know uh, whether the German military use, use it. Found the decals very thin, guys. Just be aware of that. <clears throat> very thin, very hard to place, very hard to move. They didn't rip, but just a slight bit of attention. If you even looked at it, it creased up. Um... Well, you can see I've done some dry brushing on it with a lighter colour where I've added Iraqi sand to the um, to the khaki grey and gone over it. You can see on the roof there, I've just picked out the framework under the fabric. Uh, but on the rest of the vehicle, the metal parts, um, I'd give a good dose of the lighter colour. So the khaki grey... Um, only really was still showing in recesses and in um, worn parts. So yeah, the, the finished vehicle then is you could say is more um, is is probably two parts Iraqi sand to one part khaki grey. <clears throat> and I left the fabric covering for the back um, as as the khaki grey. So yeah, the decals were super, super soft and super thin. Um, I did the version uh, out of the the guide uh, of which was in Afghanistan. It was there was a camouflage version, and I just didn't do the camouflage. It was not entirely authentic. All the U.S. Marine Corps versions of this vehicle though, are in this um, this uh, dark sand kind of color. Like I say, if you do this model and you want to pimp it up a bit more, if you can get some US Marine Corps decals, then leave the fabric roof off um, and get a kind of heavy machine gun. Um, I think they had a heavy machine gun in the passenger's position in the front. I took the windscreen off. And I think they had one on a, um, on a stand in the back as well. Um, so there's a lot you could if you wanted to modify this model to be the um, they don't call it the lights obviously in America I think it's just called it an interim fighting attack vehicle um, <clears throat> but if you wanted to do some 
something exciting with this model you could do the American versions and there's a lot more um, a lot more armament um, yeah just look it up guys but the German ones they just must be behind the lines staff cars um, yeah I'm going to try and do a um, mountainous Afghanistan diorama with the Fuchs, see how the Leopard 2 turns out, and um, and this vehicle, and the um, yeah, Mini Art, Bundeswehr, modern German troops in Afghanistan set, um, which I've not got them yet. The Ravel models are nice, they are nice. I like the way they come with this wire, and so you don't have to stretch plastic sprue to make the aerial. The Ravel models come with a piece of steel wire on attached to the um, the booklet, the guide, the construction booklet. Did some oil wash on it as well, guys. <clears throat> Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of black. And um, also burnt, bought Vallejo's Mud and Dust um, set. So instead of using my usual cheap pastels, um, I've got some, uh, some actual dust effects. Uh, that I just brushed on the wheels. It felt very similar to the pastels that I usually use, so I don't know if that's worth worth the expense, but uh, it's done now. I also got them off Amazon. But yeah, guys, like and subscribe uh, if you get something from the from the video, and if you're new to the channel. Check out my other builds, my other videos. I don't tend to do straight builds. I tend to just uh, jump uh, to the end of the instructions where you just get the one page with uh, a painting guide on. And I tend to concentrate more on, on that end uh, of things. So I'll stick some photos as well uh, on and see what you think. Let me know, guys. I put some pictures on my Instagram as well. Uh, thanks for watching.